Hello Drive. Why Mfuga is Very Right. By Martin Babu. As the Mfuga issue continues to make headlines across the local major media outlets, I was fortunate to watch and listen to his submissions on NBS this morning, the 4th of November 2024. The Mfuga speaking this morning was not the Mfuga I used to see and listen to before the Bitano saga. He seemed unsure, conflicted, and very selective and calculative in his diction. I am not sure whether he was playing it safe, for the simple reasons that he alone knows for now. The moderator too was not up to expectations, Simon Kagwa seemed like he was trying to help Mpuga, sanitize, himself before the, Kekuti Yabantu, since it is the general public, Abantu Babulijo, that have mainly taken up the matter of discussing the, UGX 500M issue, for I have not heard or suspected any iota of interest in the matter by the established relevant government institutions charged with the duty of investigating those accused of corruption and misuse of public funds. I was also momentarily conflicted. Could Mpuga be innocent, and the general public is wrongly accusing him? This set my mind in motion and the following issues crossed my mind, and I would like to explore them further. Issue number one. Corruption and misuse of public resources has been normalized in Uganda. How, while those accused of corruption are protected, praised and promoted in political and public service spheres, those who are discontented and uncomfortable with the practice, especially the whistleblowers are demoted, ostracized and shamed. Take for instance the recent case of Anderson Barora, the suspended deputy RDC of Rubaga. He is on, Kate B., because he dared voice his concerns about the conduct of the speaker and the dirt emanating from parliament. Furthermore, it is on record on a number of occasions where the president has made statements and taken actions deemed to okay the practice of misusing and diverting public resources for personal gain. For instance the following examples where the fountain of honor has inadvertently slapped suspects on the wrist for alleged corruption and misuse of public funds include a. Gavi funds, the culprits were promoted to ministerial and party positions. b. NSSF, Luboa estate saga, suspects at large and were recently celebrating, something and the chief guest was YKM. C. Military Chopper Saga, one of the culprits acknowledged receiving some sort of kickback and was advised to use the proceeds for supporting the UPDF activities. D. Undersized uniforms, the matter simply evaporated, and those charged with the duty of investigating the rod in the UPDF died under mysterious circumstances. Myombo. E. Mabati Saga, the most recent EYKM is on record defending AAA while officiating at the commissioning of a private complex of the accused. He blamed foreigners and homosexuals for what was going on in the press against the person of the speaker, and all government institutions and individuals who could have taken up investigations developed, cold feet, no wonder they are quiet. F. Lifestyle Audit, the IGG was cautioned to go slow on the matter, because according to the words of HEYKM, they are investing the proceeds locally, they might be scared and repatriate the loots. These are not my words. G. The 7% proceeds from the currency conversion in 1987. No one has ever interrogated that matter. The list is endless, I can go on and on. One common outcome from all the above, is that the culprits and suspects have either been promoted or reassigned to other offices' duties. What we have in Uganda today is the monopolization and rationalization of corruption L, by the state through its ministries, departments and agencies. No wonder one former IG noted that all, investigations somehow ended up in state house. Ellipsis. So the question is why castigate Empuga? The second issue is that, poverty and tokenism have been normalized and turned into political tools, where the majority of Ugandans are living in abject poverty, with a minority amassing wealth in astronomical proportions. Take for example the salary disparities among civil servants, some earn in millions while others earn in hundreds and thousands, yet they have similar job descriptions the abuse of the term, corporate social responsibility, CSR, by the same persons who are charged with the responsibility of managing our resources. The President, Speaker, Chief Justice, PM, and others all have budgets in billions of shillings under the guise of, CSR. The skewed taxation system where a few enjoy subsidies, tax holidays, waivers and others are double taxed, 
salary disparities among civil servants, especially the teachers, tokenist, programs such as Bana Bagagawal, PDM, Bottle Irrigation, etc. The list is endless. The end result is that majority of the population are held in bondage and are intentionally ensnared to worshipping the corrupted and cannot hold them public and political officials to account. The majority Ugandans have been reduced to begging for what should be ordinarily theirs by rights. For instance the MPs are so burdened by their constituents for school fees, burial expenses, medical bills, food, rent, etc. to the extent that the populace have been tuned to look to MPs for social service delivery and not government and the civil servants. No wonder the phrase, gavamenti idiom, is so common and normal, that we are used to it. Take for example the religious and cultural leaders whose cardinal role should be to call out the ills committed by the leaders against the lead, they are given, fuel gazellers, four-wheel drives which they cannot afford under ordinary circumstances and have to continually beg their benefactors for fuel and maintenance costs. All have been compromised at inception and are both, conscious and unconscious enablers of the, corrupt, nepotic and rotten, system. Paradoxically, we celebrate Jan and Luwum Day every year. The current state of our political, economic and social sphere is a horde of specters and reviling occurrences that have become a constant in our press. No wonder, it is now normal and regrettably, okay, to be corrupt. From the foregoing, Mpuga is right. The only mistake he made was that the forum in which he did what he did, NUP, is not friendly and accommodative to, self-aggrandizement. No wonder, the general public do not even care to know and remember the names of the other commissioners who partook in the, Mpuga saga, maybe because their, operating environment, NRMO is okay and immune to such anomalies. Mpuga may be right. Martin Babu. Disability activist and social critic.